Hello and welcome to the vlog of Rhonda's Readings. This is another recipe. Today I'm making a poke bowl. So it's really simple to make and it's delicious, it's healthy. Uh, many of the ingredients are optional and you'll see that on the way. So let's go. My ingredients for my poke bowls are I've got some brown rice that I'll just cook in the microwave. I have some sashimi grade salmon and some fish roe that I got at the Sydney fish market today. I have some sesame seeds which I'm going to toast. I also have some creamy garlic aioli. I have some seaweed that I have to cut up. The veggies I've got are just some spring onions, a very big <laughs> white radish. Um, they were all the same price, that was the price each, so I got the biggest one. I have a zucchini, I have, have an avocado, and I've also got a couple of carrots. Just going to start by peeling my carrots and my radish. And yes, surprise, surprise, I'm not putting mushrooms in it. I normally put mushrooms in every recipe. So just peeling my carrots and my radish. So it's a pretty big one. It's a little bit hairy on the outside, so I thought I'd just peel it. Um, and I have an awesome new technique for doing vegetables. I've got a new toy to play with. So I'll show you that when I've finished peeling them. So I probably only need about half of that, because that's quite a lot. And I'll just sort of cut that. Or maybe, actually, no, I'll try this hole on my new toy. This is my new toy. It's a little slicer thing. It's like a weird shaped pencil sharpener. So I'll demonstrate with the zucchini first because that should be the easiest sort of thing to do. So you basically um, put it through and then you twirl it so it's like that. So can you see the bits coming out? So it's like little spirals of things which I think is pretty cool. So if you've ever had a poke bowl and you've seen spiraled veggies, that's basically what I'm doing. And then it ends up with a little bit, if you can see this one here, which I think is hilarious. Okay, so this is my veggie peeling technique. So my husband's just sampling it. Okay, so it gets a bit weird. It's really like a sharpened pencil so yes i'm happy to see you all right so let's have a bit more you might as well use all of this zucchini because i've got cucumbers that we use in salads we've got heaps of those so if anyone is used to using this thing and knows what it's called please let me know um so it's actually got an end bit that you're meant to sort of stab it's a stabby end and then you the idea is that you turn it but you've, I think you've got to wait till it gets a bit closer to that. So still just turning my cucumber. No, what is it? Zucchini. Okay, so it gets a bit wobbly with this little bit. What does the other end do? I don't know. There's another bit too, but I don't know what... Maybe I'm... Actually, maybe I'm using the wrong end, I think. Yeah, I think I'm using the wrong one. But that's okay. That's all in fun and game. So if you see, this end is just a straight blade. But this one's got little bits, so that's what I actually want to do. I want to, yeah, there you go, look. that's what That was my effect I wanted. So um, I'm just turning that to get little spirals. I might have to cut the ones I've done wrong. So this is the stubby bit. I'll put that in to give it a go. And you basically turn it like that. See, I'm just turning it. If anyone owns one of these equipments, bits of equipment and knows what it's called, please let me know. If you have any 
suggestions for better technique than me, please let me know. So I'm going to do the two other veggies as well with this. See, and then you, the idea is that you turn it like a handle. But this has decided to not work now, so don't know why. So just turning this. Okay, so this is my thing that's left. <laughs> All right, so this is what I wanted for my poke bowl. I wanted the strands. Um, what I might do is these spirals, they're awesome too, but I might just sort of cut those a bit so they so it looks like I've done the right thing. So yeah, that's our little zucchini spirals. I'll also cut up some of the spring onions. So we haven't got many of them, but I'll just cut them up. That's obviously going to go in our little thing. Because I do have, remember this garlic mayonnaise, garlic aioli. And I'll be mixing all, all that in. I will actually start the microwave again with the rice cooking. So you'll hear that in the background, but I'm just just explained how I was sort of cutting up the veggies. So we'll give the carrot a go next. This one's going to be entertaining, I'm sure. Or would you want to see that next? No, no, I'll leave that. I'll do the carrots first. Okay, so I haven't done a carrot before, but I guess you put the fatter end in first, but that's kind of fat at both ends. Um, just putting that in. So this is the spiral bits. So I did a carrot last night for dinner. We had salad for dinner. So I guess we're not having much carrot in our poker bowl. And try not to grate your fingernail also. Okay, I'm going to use the stabby bit. Oh, that one's working a bit better with the stabby bit. Now it's not spinning anymore. So I just tried to push it. Okay, I can see how this can be a bit dangerous. I'm just going to cut that off and eat it. And now it's a little bit stuck. Okay, I'm left with two carrot ends and not much carrot. <laughs> but I'll add that to my pokey, pokey bowl. I want to say it's a Pokemon bowl, but it's not. So obviously not much carrot. I could add more, but I'll see how I go with this big white one. Okay, you ready for this one? That's pretty exciting. I think I'll use this for the thumbnail of this vlog. Oh, so that's a lot bigger. So imagine you had a carrot like this, how well that would work. Okay, I'm hoping that we like the taste of this because we've got a bloody lot of... <laughs> okay, so obviously I don't need this stabby end because I've got a lot to hold on to. It's very impressive, isn't it, ladies? <laughs> okay, so maybe I'll just use that bit because it's quite a lot. Um, yeah, so that's a lot and it really smells like a radish sort of one, but that's our poke bowl. I might actually do some more carrot as well just because 
I, we like carrot and it's not much of it so I'll just do some more carrot as well okay so I just realized I've made an error and I've got baby carrots which is really not good and that's after doing two more carrots that's all the carrot I've got so that's gonna be it for my carrot for my veggies so I've just got those in there and my husband's just poured me a glass of Moscato so this is what it's just a cheap Aldi one but it's okay oh bubbles up the nose okay so that's the veggies I did also say I was going to what did I say I was going to do I said I was going to um, just grill some sesames but they're actually roasted already so that's perfect if anyone has any recipe suggestions for this thing please let me know because I'm really not sure what we're going to do with it there's quite a lot of it as you can see so let me know okay this is a seaweed sheet that we've got and it's really difficult to cut and what I normally do is just cut it so just gonna sort of cut it in strips like that I could probably do that a bit more efficiently and do this and cut it like that so that's my veggie spirals and my um, what's it called? Seaweed. My veggie spirals and my yucky nori. An ingredient I forgot to include is edanami and they're frozen so we'll just cook those. One thing I'm going to do is start cutting up my salmon. So this I believe was 180 grams of sashimi grade salmon. So I've already got my bowls and I'll just basically start cutting that and putting that in. Just have a glass of wine before I do that. All right, so, so this stuff is about $60 a kilo. So sort of like twice as much as you'd pay for uh, obviously my sharp knife isn't great, but I've, twice as much as you'd pay a kilo for just salmon you'd have. So we've actually got some salmon as well. So this is what we would typically have just with vegetables or salad, and that's usually sort of about uh, $25 to $32 a kilo. But this sashimi grade salmon is $60 a kilo. So my knife's not super sharp, but I'll just try to cut it a bit sort of thinner as well. I don't know if that's a bit too, that's a bit better. Yeah, I don't have super sharp knives. But that's basically what each looks like. And I just start sort of putting that in each bowl. So obviously this being sashimi grade means you can eat it like this, you don't have to cook it. Okay, so I'm going to try a different knife. So that's better. Um, you can actually cube it as well. So we've had poke bowls that have had have been sort of sliced like I'm doing but what I might do for this part as well is just sort of cube it and show you what that is so it's it's basically sort of like so I'd probably do that in actually I'll do that in sort of like thirds so that's a thicker slice than I've done thicker than this one and I'll also cut that one and it's basically cubing it So that's just the microwave in the background just cooking the brown rice so this is just doing it in cubes like you would do so just like little cubes like that or you can do little slices like that so um, we're not 
it's just my husband and I are not serving it to anyone fancy so I'm happy to just sort of do it differently to show you different ways that we do it and you can also use you could do this with um, sashimi grade scallops or tuna or fish or something like that um, but we we love salmon Um, even sort of salmon that you can buy sort of what's what's the salmon called that's we get for the salad yeah even smoked salmon would be good so smoked salmon you can buy just in a supermarket and you sort of have it in strips with salad So that's showing you different examples of the presentation. So you can have the strips like I've done, or you can have it cubes like that. So um, we've had them either way, and either way is beautiful, but it's just your sort of personal preference as to what you like. Um, so I'm just, I'm doing a combination of both, really. So when you normally get a poke bowl, you normally have it kind of like all the ingredients are in together, but they're sort of separate, and then you obviously mix it up. So some people like to have them, <laughs> like to eat it separately, um, and some people like to have it, like to sort of mix it up. So I used to like them separate, but now I like to mix it up. So I'm just going to try that just to show I can eat it. So this is what our bowls look like. We've got our sliced and cubed sashimi grade salmon. We've also got some fish roe. So we'll put some of that on the top, but I'll also put some in the bottom as well. So literally sort of putting, just um, cubing that out. So just putting it like that. And you can have these, they're really sort of bubbly. All right, so I've also got avocado, so I'll cut up the avocado. And again, it's presentation with this as well. So um, sort of doing it in cubed or sliced, whatever you want. So just sort of cutting up the avocado like that. And I'll just start putting those bits in. Okay, so that's the presentation so far. I've got the avocado, salmon and roe, just like that. I also have edanami cooked. So that's these ones just here, those um, broadbands basically. And then I add those to it. All right, so I'll put a little bit more fish row now that I can see I've got more space for it. What I'm going to do with the sesame is just um, mix that in with the rice and the garlic aioli and make a bit of a sort of like a Okay, so I've got my poke bowls here, the two of them. I've got my veggies in here. I've taken out most of the seaweed because I'll use that as a garnishing with the rest of the fish row. What I'm going to do now, I've got my brown rice cooked. I'm simply going to add that to my mix. So I know I said that I do um, sort of present it separate, um, but for the sake of what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you sort of and mix it up together. I've also got some roasted sesame, so I'm simply going to add that as well. So it's kind of like a cold sort of salad, but the warmed, the cooked brown rice will make it a bit warm. So I'm just adding sesame to that, it's a little bit difficult to get out. Just got to open it a bit more. Just easier said than done. Alright, so just adding more sesame to that. 
so that will give it a nice texture. Then I just sort of mix it up a bit. So it's quite sort of dry as you can see right now. Um, the next one is completely optional. I've got the creamy garlic aioli. I don't normally add this to poke bowls, but I had one recently and it was beautiful. So I'm just going to add some of that. And mix that in. I've also got some roasted sesame Japanese dressing. So as you can see, that's just mixing in nicely there. So I've also got this stuff, which is um, really nice as well. It's just unfortunately that's not open either. So I'll put this in as well. So I've got to open that again. And I'm tipping some of that in. I know it probably looks like I'm putting a lot, but we both like it, so <laughs> that's why I'm adding it. So just adding that now and mixing that up. So that's mixing in with the veggies. So that's looking quite good. So what I do now is I add this to my poke bowl. So just adding that in. So you, you could do it completely separate, like literally have the zucchini on one side, the carrot on another side and make it look pretty. But I'm just, I'm just putting, so just adding that now. I've got some tongs and just putting that in. So you literally sort of put that in the center. And same with this one, I'm just putting that in. So it's a very filling dish, particularly with the rice, because that's really adding some, some carbs. Um, I'm just gonna top it up because we might as well use all of it. It's no, no use keeping it. Okay, and that's my poke balls. And you will find when you order these, they're quite expensive, like, for what it is. I mean, it's it's basically like a, a fancy salad, so it's quite expensive for what it is. Um, so it's simple to make on your own. And then we simply top it with the seaweed. So I put that on both of them, which I've just left out like that. And I've also got the fish roe. So... Um, basically that's, that's finished now. It's just, again, I'm just going to use the rest of this. Um, it was only, it wasn't, this one wasn't expensive. So basically topping it like that and that's our poke bowls. So obviously with the ingredients, just use what you have. Um, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on a <laughs> salmon, then, you know, I mean, it's about $60 a kilo, so, you know, just use 100 grams or 50 grams or that sort of thing. It's, you don't have to use much or get something else, which is cheaper. Um, but other than that, that's our finished product. So just going to try a bit of that. So um, you obviously mix it up. You you. You can sort of try each one, each element separately, or you can mix it all up, and it obviously gets messy if you mix it up, but I'll just try that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, really nice combination with our seaweed, our roasted seaweed, and our garlic aioli. I probably would have even put in a little bit more of this, um, but that's, that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. I recommend having this with a glass of white wine or rosé. Um, it's, it's delicious. Let me know what you like to put in your poke bowl. Hopefully I've inspired you to make your own. Um, as I said, when you have them, when you eat out, they can be expensive and they're so simple to make. So please comment below. Let me know what you'd like to put in yours.
Thank you for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Please comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rhonda's Readings. Please like this vlog. Please share it with your friends. Click the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of when I release future vlogs. Thank you.